Welcome back to Gen Xer versus Gen AI. I'm your host, Dr. Eloise. Got a great episode for you today. I'm really, really excited about it. Today, we're going to use Gen AI to create, analyze, and review contracts. There's so much to get to, we're gonna jump right into it, but stick around to the end because I'm going to talk about the implications on the legal tech marketplace, especially contract lifecycle management systems, and perhaps even the legal profession itself. Disclaimer, this is not legal advice. I cannot give you legal advice. I am not a lawyer. I am an entertainer and a sometimes supply chain and procurement consultant. Or maybe I have that backwards. I don't know. I am simply documenting my educational journey through the land of Gen AI. Everything here is for information purposes and not for the purpose of providing legal advice. So with that said, let's send it. To start this experiment, I needed real contracts. And I looked around and for confidentiality reasons, I couldn't find any. So I did what any good Gen Xer would do. I phoned a friend. Pick up. Hello. And of course, my friend looked around and couldn't find any contracts either. So what did he do? He went to ChatGPT and asked it. In return, it brought back this website called 1CLE, which has a massive repository of fully executed contracts that were part of SEC filings. It's truly an amazing treasure trove of documents, as you can see here. I could do a whole separate episode on this. There is so much information. And if you look into the various categories, there's a whole subcategory of manufacturing contracts for contract manufacturers. This is truly a topic for another day. So excited about this. Anyway, so I downloaded 12 contracts to use as my data set. And as you can see here, they are legit contracts with signatures, full on terms, and the only thing that was redacted was the pricing information. So I went through and added fake pricing. With the contracts in hand, I'm ready to do the analysis. As always, you need a premium OpenAI account. By the way, OpenAI is not a sponsor, but I'm open to it. Just DM me. If we go to Explore GPTs and we type in contract, you can see there are a lot of contract related GPTs. There's a whole bunch to explore here. It really just shows the power of what is at your fingertips just with basic OpenAI capabilities. I chose Contract Reviewer Assistant and let's give it a shot. I'm going to upload a single contract and ask it to analyze the various terms. And as you can see, it reads through, interprets and analyzes the contract and summarizes it in plain English. If I put on my pretend lawyer hat, here are three relevant questions a general counsel might be interested in. What's the limitation of liability? What's the price and service level requirements? And what's the restrictions on data usage and privacy? I hit return and voila, I get the answers. Again, in English that I can read. And if you look at what the AI brings back, you realize that OMG, did OpenAI just put a bunch of contract reviewers out of business? This is a staggering amount of capability just at your fingertips. Now, if I put my procurement hat on, I want to know, is there an auto renewal and what are variations in clauses? So to make this experiment more compelling, I'm going to upload four contracts and ask it both of those questions. I'm just going to read the results here because they're pretty amazing. In the IBM and Bluefly contract, the term and renewal process is detailed out and it automatically renews for an additional term. In the Free Markets and Visteon contract, there is no explicit mention of an auto renewal clause. In the summary of variations, it of course flags that IBM and Bluefly has an auto renewal clause and the Free Markets and Visteon one has a specifies a fixed term without a renewal. This is just truly amazing. Okay, that was great. I really love that, but that was pretty easy if we're honest. Now for the big reveal. I chose half a dozen contract manufacturing contracts because they have pricing tables embedded in them. The pricing tables makes autonomous analysis really difficult. 
for many years, analyzing pricing tables across contracts has been what would be the equivalent of the Turing test for procurement and legal tech. Take a look here within the contract and you can see the complexity amongst the pricing tables here, but also the specifications which are added into the contracts as well. So you can really see that these contracts are complicated. By the way, as a sidebar, we could use this contract reviewer AI to analyze variations in the specifications to either identify current problems or perhaps future problems. Okay, so now let's ask the contract reviewer to identify variations in cost across the pricing table. So in my prompt, I can type identify variations in the pricing for the same product within these contracts. As you can see, it returns that in the contract between Annie's and Chelton House products, the contract specifies pricing for various product sizes over three years. For example, a six ounce pack conversion cost changes from $50 in year one to $54 in year two and $100 in year three. What is the difference in price for the creamy macaroni and cheese? The contract reviewer assistant across all the contracts and it finds that in the contract with the little lady food, the price per case of creamy macaroni and cheese is $12.84. However, the contract with Philadelphia Macaroni Company, the price for the same item specified as creamy macaroni and cheese changes to $15.84 per case. There you go, it did it. Of course, the possibilities are endless. We can even create a contract. So in my prompt here, it says, based on these contracts, create a new contract manufacturing contract between Annie's and Acme Manufacturing, which I made up, to produce the same products. And as you can see, it completely lines out all of the elements that you would need for a new contract. There you have it. This was super easy. Me, with no special technical skills and definitely no legal skills, I was able to analyze contracts like that with this contract reviewer GPT. And there's many more. The implication here is that the legal tech profession is going to go through some bumpy times. And absolutely, the contract lifecycle management tools, those are done. Think about it. All I need is a Dropbox or SharePoint, some folder where I put all my documents, and then I can point the contract reviewer Gen AI to that, and it will do everything I need from creating documents to analyzing documents. I no longer need a contract lifecycle management software. That has huge implications because that industry or that subset of legal tech is massive. And I know you're thinking, okay, but in the corporate environment, security, privacy, blah, 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 blah. I get it. That's important. But that's a trivial problem to solve. Do not let that be an excuse for inaction on this. Absolutely anybody that touches contracts should be experimenting with this. A special shout out to my Gen Xer friend, Jim Delcusis, a recovering attorney and founder of the Pursuit Legal Marketplace. He's the one that helped me find the contracts. Oh, and DM me if you have a special request or something you'd like me to explore with Gen AI. I've already received a number of requests that will make it into future episodes. As always, please click the like and subscribe and tell a friend. Thank you for watching.